What's going on, y'all? I'm back again for another review of Rebel Season 1, Episode 4, um, Chasing Ghosts. Okay. Yes, I still have on the same thing that I had on the last week's episode because I recorded these two reviews at the same time. BET put the two new episodes, you know, on their website directly after the first episode premiere, so that explains that. But, um... <laughs> Rebel, it's cute. I like it. Like, um, we see her more so getting into the private investigation, um, field because at this point, that's all that she's left to do. I mean, and I feel as though it's her way of, you know, doing something of a semblance to her being a cop and not being a cop without her badge. But she can still do investigations like as, as if she was still on the force full time and, you know, with uh, all the responsibilities and um, things that she's been doing. But also able to stay close to the investigation of her brother. So, um, in this episode, it really wasn't much to it. It was more so about her relationship with TJ and TJ helping out. Um, we found out that he helps out with veterans, okay? Everybody, well... TJ and Bravo met each other because they were serving overseas, okay, in the military together. And they both have a common or mutual friend named Kim. Kim stays at the shelter that I guess he was working at, and, they work, and they're trying to find out where does she go, okay. Kim is played by Lauren London. I said, look at Lauren London, all right. Let me tell you something. She look cute with the little baby fat on her. You know, y'all leave her alone. Stop hating. Uh, it fits her, but... You know, we see a totally different Lauren London. She's not did up. She's not, you know, trying to be cute or whatever. She's really down, 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 down to earth, like, <laughs> to the lowest of the low. Because she's playing um, someone who was in the military. And when they came back from the military, they have not been the same, you know. And we hear many stories about this happening. Um, you go over there one way, come back another way. PTSD and... Um, you know, mental issues and all that stuff. And that's exactly what's going on with her. They're trying to figure out where did she go, okay? And <clears throat> they go to this place where it's frequented by homeless people. And as you saw, a lot of the homeless people, they also have um, either mental illness or some things like that going on with them. And um, she get a tip from a judge or whatever. They used to actually be a judge as to where they probably could find Kim and what was going on and, you know, anything that he need, you need, come to him. They find Kim actually over there talking to herself, you know, and because she has this, um, you know, you can tell she has a mental illness, you know, and probably schizophrenic or whatever, but... She just kept on talking about something. They're trying to kill me. They're trying to kill me. They're trying to kill me. So when they get to her, they find out that she's a part of this little scheme or whatever. Some lady named Yolanda, you know, uh, hit up her, some other veterans, um, one of her friends named Sherry or whatever. And all of a sudden, they went missing. And, you know, they were supposed to go somewhere. Next thing you know, they don't come back. Another person got shot. She knows that she's killing people. And, you know, they're supposed to be getting money from this and from that. She told it as if, you know, she really wasn't that much of a part of it. You know, like she was an innocent part in this. And I, I get it. You know, we're going to leave out a few details to let us, you know, uh, seem as if we on the up and up. But they find and do the investigations and all this stuff. Um... And it's all a scheme. It's all a scheme. They go talk to the lady at the food truck, ask them, do they know somebody named Yolanda? Her name is Helen. They was like, no, I don't know nobody named Yolanda. I do know a Kim. Kim got kicked out because, you know, she was uh, stealing from other people and, you know, doing all this stuff. So they pissed off at her for saying, but for, the, for her not telling her that, you know, but they still further investigate. Mind you, TJ is having doubts because, you know, it was like, how can you really believe what she said? You know, she's not really all the way there in the head. But as they go to the bank where they see, they, no, they didn't go to the bank. They came across a crime scene, okay? And it just so happens to be Sherry. Now, see, this shit, Jimmy has every fucking show that I've been watched, the new or old, it's always one or two people on there that literally has 
to die. I mean, not just go. You got to die. Jimmy and your racist ass, you have got to die. Like, he is so comfortable talking to Mac, you know, Mac about all this stuff. Oh, what you doing with this jungle bunny bunny and all this stuff? And you with this black bitch and you like this. And I'm sitting here like, why must you have... Why do you have to say all this stuff? It's not necessary, okay? We get it. You don't like black folks, okay? It, it, it's fine. I mean, I mean, it ain't fine, but, you know, keep that shit to yourself, okay? <laughs> but they get to the crime scene, and instantly, Rebel sees the cop with the mustache, okay? The main one who got out the car and who started firing the shots at Malik. And then Rebel was about to go for his ass and TJ had to hold her back and was like, chill out, chill out. He going to say, she going to say, what the fuck you doing here? And it was like, you know, I'm sorry about what happened to your brother. You know, shit happens. Okay. Uh, he shouldn't have had a gun. He shouldn't have did this. He was being very rude, very condescending, um, and just a, a total asshole for no fucking reason. Okay. And so this is amping up Rebel. Mind you. Jimmy comes over there, talk about some. What are you doing over here, civilian, and all this stuff? So TJ steps in and try to, you know, um, do a distraction because she was there to talk to the ME worker, the medical examiner, and you know, she gets a picture and she shows the picture of the corpse because the corpse been out there. It was a gunshot wound. The corpse was out there for a while, decomposing. I think she said it was for a week or whatever. Showed the picture to um, Kim. Kind of find out it was Sherry. But TJ was handling Jimmy the whole time. He was using it as a distraction so she can get over there and get that information. And it's just very, very irritating when I see Jimmy. Very irritating. Um, so they lead it back to somehow they get connected to a bank. This is where all this stuff is going at, at a bank, where they collect the benefits and, um, you know, money from veterans and things of that such. And they follow in this receptionist or whatever at the bank. Uh, we meet the, I guess, one of the main people that work there that, you know, bankers or whatever. He's a black guy. Of course, he's going to be on his P's and Q's and give you a smile and all that stuff. Okay. So then they follow in this receptionist girl and she's married with kid or whatever uh next thing you know we see her up there getting it in with her uh boss so they use that to blackmail her into making her you know give them some information that they need okay and this is when they found out that the black guy that's at the bank he also is in on the whole scheme okay she wanted at first to see the video footage okay so when they see the video footage, they see Kim, she out here with the uh, ATM and all this stuff, kind of find out Kim was a part of this scheme, you know, taking money from veterans. That's what they were doing. She was a part of it, too. She didn't think that anything was wrong with it at the time because she needed the money, but she knew she knew it was wrong, but she didn't want to stop it. You know what I'm saying? And you're doing something that's illegal, okay? You're taking their benefits. You're taking their money, but not giving them benefits and stuff like that. And then she said, but she got out of hand because I didn't know that Yolanda was going to kill anybody. I'm not a murderer and I'm not this. And TJ wanted to send her to the cops or whatever, but she was taking up, um, Rebel was taking up for her. And TJ was like, so what's the difference between them cops? How you get mad at them cops for taking up for each other when it comes to your brother's murder and you over here taking up for Kim? I would never understand y'all bond. I said, how dare you try to compare the two method, okay? Method. Don't do that, all right? Don't do that. I said they deliberately killed her brother. I mean, she didn't... I, yeah, she was scamming, but them veterans... Well, I can't say they all still got their lives because some of them got killed, okay? Well, she didn't know that, all right? But I feel like you can't really compare the two. And, of course, Rebel got in her feelings over there, too. too. But um, they wind up trying to find out where Yolanda at and kind of find out she does not... The black ass in on it. They call him out on it. And they say, he was like, I don't have her number. She comes up in here and she talks to me and all this stuff. So in the process of that, she walks in there. Kind of find out she is the girl that was at the um soup kitchen. She the head of it. And so <laughs> they trying to be undercover with it and be cool with it. Could you close this door?
I apologize. You know when you babysitting? Or you, um... They trying to be cool with it, on the sly with it, okay? You know, um, there goes Yolanda right there. Her real name, Helen, and all this, all this, all this. Okay, I peep her on my left, all right? You peep her? Okay, we're not going to say nothing. I'm going to go over here and do this. Before they can get it all together, here go Kim. Rebel, Yolanda, that's Yolanda right there. So Yolanda then got ticked off. She didn't run, you know, running away from it and all that stuff. And eventually she get caught because TJ was out there and she was talking about how, you know, she was dishonorably discharged and she gave 20 years of her life to the, to the military or whatever. And it's how they treat her. And that's the reason why she was doing all this stuff. She was just bitter, wanting revenge and taking action against the government, I guess. So she took it out on, you know, veterans who, uh, you know, couldn't take care of themselves. You know, the, 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 the ones that was very vulnerable, you know, vulnerable. And eventually, she just gave herself up. Fine. Moving on from that little story. TJ, well, let me just tell you. TJ and um his girl, I think her name was Tasha, they was about to move in with each other. And Rebel was like, if you want to get this shit back, because they was rekindling some stuff. Even Sheena asked her, you asked him, are you trying to get back with her? What's going on? And she asked him the whole, um, um, Rebel the same thing. And, um... Last episode, <laughs> Rebel did say the reason why we broke up is because your credit score was the same um, age as you, the same as your age. Child, when they was at that restaurant and he was trying to pay for that food, because, you know, Sheena Mama got on her and was like, you know, you always bringing these people here, but don't nobody ever pay. You don't work here. You don't do nothing. Oh, unless the man was trying to pay for the stuff, card declined. Oh, my bad. I forget. I thought I forget. I canceled it. Nigga, get your shit together. How you finna move in with somebody you can't budget worth for shit, okay? Your car's declining everywhere. But, um, so I guess him and Rebel are gonna try to see if they can make it work again. Because he was trying to kiss her at the end of the episode. She said, no, I ain't here for that right now. You need to go take care of home first, okay? So when he go back to the house, um, to his place, Tasha comes over. And he was like, she talking about a little condo and all this stuff that's coming up and we should go check it out. He she he said, Listen, I don't think it's time for us to move in together. I don't, you know, wanna make that decision when I'm not really sure that I even wanna do this. And she was like, I'm not even sure that I wanna get divorced. She was like, Oh my god. <laughs> it's rebel, huh? <laughs> oh my god. You've been sleeping with her. I said, no shit, bitch. I said, slap the fuck out of her. Okay, she slapped the fuck out of him. I was like, all right, you on the right course. Girl, just go. Just go. If he's so heavily involved with his ex and they on good terms like the way that they were and they haven't even had the divorce yet, girl, you should have known some shit was going on, okay? You should have exited out that situation a long time ago because if y'all on good terms and all this stuff, how come the divorce ain't finalized yet? Exactly, Okay. But moving on from that, um, Mac had this case, okay? Mac and Rebel had a case together, and it was coming up where they have to go testify and all that shit. He's been trying to contact her. She's been ignoring him. And eventually, he comes into her car, you know, and gives her this, um, <clears throat> this disc drive, thumb drive, or whatever. She said, I wanted to give it to you on Malik's birthday or whatever. And I said, what? He was like, you can hate me, you can do this, and you can do that, but, you know, you're going to have to look at it eventually. She looks at it, and it's a video of him rapping, and then Mac in the background rapping with him. So, it's just, I don't know, it's just trying to show that, like I said in the last review, Mac might be a good guy if it wasn't for the people that he hang around with, mainly his brother, okay? Because he looks at his brother crazy when he say the stupid shit that he says, okay? And, you know... Later, she finally comes in to do this, give her a little testimony for this little case or whatever, and they have a conversation. And he said, I don't know why I did what I did, but all I know is ever since the day I got shot, we had that tweaker, and he, um, no, stabbed me in the part. And ever since then, it's like I've been seeing flashes. I black out, and I see flashes, flashes, flashes.
I'm so sorry, y'all. Wait a minute. I literally just paused for a second. Y'all know I wouldn't do that if it wasn't important. <sighs> so stupid. You know when you waiting on stuff and you've been waiting on stuff and people just... <sighs> I apologize. But anyway... Moving on, what was I saying? He said he was seeing flashes and all this stuff. And um, he said that's exactly what happened when he was out there with Malik. He said he saw flashes and he could see himself shooting Malik, but don't understand why he was doing it. And so I guess Rebel's heart or, you know, she's kind of softening up to him, realizing that he really wasn't trying to shoot him. He just had a glitch, I guess. I still don't give a shit. Okay, I really don't because people still making it seem like, you know, oh, woe is him. Okay, no, they show no sympathy for the fact that her brother got killed. Like, they, it's like a fucking joke to them. Like, they don't give a shit. When she came up into that police department, they looked at her like she was um, public enemy, enemy number one. Like, she really ratted out on them. I'm supposed to keep, keep quiet, but y'all the one that killed my brother. Hell no, I ain't finna be, keep quiet. Hell no, it ain't no code of brothers or whatever the fuck. Bitch, please. Bitch, please, okay? Fuck you. Uh, y'all got y'all lives. My brother don't, okay? Get out of here. But um, when he was in a car, he was like, you know, you want to talk to your brother and tell, ask him why was he fucking around with April. Girl, he gonna say some. I was just um, dipping off in her a couple of times. That's it. But, you know, he didn't kill the girl. Okay. So they trying to figure out exactly who killed her. They're still not sure. Maybe it was one of the other police officers. We don't know at this point. But that's basically what was going on in this episode. This episode was kind of cute. It wasn't up to, you know, like high energy like the other ones. But... We getting somewhere. We getting somewhere. I'm still digging it. I'm still hanging in there. If I miss something, I feel like I'm missing something. Am I missing something? You know, she did her little poetry slam at the end. Um, Kim, you know, they got her together. Got her in the, um, you know, a little shelter and all that stuff. But other than that, that was the episode. If I missed anything, you know, we can discuss down in the comments. And I will see you guys later. Peace.